everybody. Welcome to Rams Roundup. I'm Palmer Alexander sitting in tonight for Ishmael Sistrunk, who is on assignment. Joining me tonight is Robin Browning uh, from the show called The Right, The Wrong, and The Random. Uh, she's been ramping it up. She's had a lot of exciting guests on over the last couple of weeks, so make sure that you check out. Uh, Robin, the Rams had a blowout victory. I, I predicted them to uh, beat the Bears. Uh, what do you think about their performance uh, this past Sunday? Well, I thought it was um, a good display of strength and best that we um, have been seeing for the past two weeks. And so kept that up. We had the running back staying strong with their run game and the strength. And defensive line stay true to form, kept pressure on Josh McCown, getting him out of the pocket, making him run all over the field. And they and it also displayed too on um the goal line stand in which uh, Michael Bush was stuffed <laughs> on the fourth and goal. And then we had I can't believe it, the wide receivers show much finesse. Much enough. They caught the ball dry. Jared Cook rose from it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Tavon Austin was like that kid back in the day where we play a tag and we can't catch him and we get frustrated. And I see more and more teams about to be frustrated because they can't catch up with that little dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he, he got the game off. And talk about how important was it for for the Rams to to get out to that to that big league? Because that's one of the things that I've always harped on, you know, them getting out in front, getting the lead, and learn how to protect the lead. But getting getting the score in that fashion, a breathtaking 65-yard run to open the game. I mean, the Bears had a look on their face like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was something that, you know, that's two games in a row. And, of course, I was I held my breath because I'm like, oh, God, please don't let it be a flat road again. Please let it count. And, you know, we had a blocking from all his receivers. You know, the receivers even barely got there, um, especially Austin Pettis gave him that last block, and he came running way from across the field to give him that great block uh, in order for him to get into the end zone. But, you know, you just held your breath like, oh, please, please let it be clean. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, it was a, a great – it needed it. It got the crowd going. You know, it's probably like half and half uh, Rams, um, Rams fans and Bears fans. And, you know, that got the crowd going. And from there on, they went on to, once again, the first four play, they were able to score. Every possession, the first four possessions that they had, they were able to score. So that that was tremendous um, for him to start off again with a great play. You talked about power. You talked about finesse. And, and, and the Rams definitely imposed their will on Chicago with 258 yards uh, running, running the football. And you see how important it is for the offensive line to take complete control uh, of the line of scrimmage, and and you notice that how they imposed their will because when Zach Stacy went out, uh, Cunningham uh, did just as just as good as he did. Thirteen rushes over 109 yards, a rushing touchdown, three rushing touchdowns by the Rams. Right. I mean, one went out, another one came in. Uh... I don't know what you're calling it. Is this another Bash Brothers <laughs> type <laughs> situation again? But, I, you know, whatever you want to call it, I love it. And a lot, I heard uh, many commentators talking about um, it's old school football. You know, I wouldn't necessarily call it old school football. That's just right football. You have to have a great running game. You have to have a, a punishing um, running back in order for your offense to open up. So I really just don't think that, you know, like say, that's old school football, run, run, run. I mean, it's not like that that's making them very one-dimensional, that they're, that they, that's all they rely on, a la Adrian Peterson is your first go-to. But it with them being able to run and run at will, basically, 
whether it's two yards or 22 yards, they really have, they rarely get stopped. So. And, and I think, I think that, that the Rams are playing to their strength. I think their yes. strength is around the football. I mean, they tried throwing the ball all over the field. And it and it didn't work. I mean, you you was a head coach before. How important was it to just stick with the game plan that just that fit the personnel that you had? Because it seems like that's what the Rams are doing now. Now they have some success doing it. Right. It seems like you know what, Palmer. I think they've been watching the, our um, broadcast and they haven't said it. <laughs> they haven't called us yet because you and I have been talking about this so long. You know, as you say, as a coach. Um, it's, we talked about their stubbornness is going to take them right down into the tank. However, they changed the game plan. Once Sam Bradford went out, I think the lights just clicked on for everybody um, and to say, you know what, we got to stop doing this, throwing the ball everywhere. I think it was a good thing even for, for this to happen, for them to realize, you know what, this is how we really should be playing. We should have been doing this all along. Um, <laughs> I really, you know, sometimes you got to, you know, you it, it may be too late. You may think, oh, it's too late. But I'm glad that they got it done now instead of, you know, riding, a, losing all the way in, through January. So. Uh, right. Right. And I think, I think it's, it, I think it's always important to uh, know the pulse of your team and, and to be, and, and listen, I mean, I was totally against it. I was disappointed. I'm thinking that, you know, with Tavon Austin and then they add Stanley Bailey and Jared Cook, they're going to throw mm -hmm. the ball all around the field. And it turns out that running the ball has been their best friend. I mean, doing the OTAs, I mean, Benny Cunningham and Zach Stacy. I'm standing next to Tony Softley, you know, doing the OTAs. Uh -huh. okay? Tony Softley is, is, is the Rams uh, sideline reporter on the radio. Yep. And, um, I said, boy, Zach Stacy looks good, but he said Cunningham looks better. And, and before he said that, Cunningham took off, ran the ball maybe 50 yards down the sideline. And this is doing OTAs back, you know, back in, in in May. So to see what he's doing now is not so much of a surprise. And I think the one thing that you always kind of hold your breath with what Cunningham is, uh, is he going to hold on to the ball? I mean, he lost another fumble, but he was able to uh, – I uh, jump mm -hmm. on top of it, but I think it's important to have young guys like that to step in. And as you see, when, when Stacy went down, it's like next man up, and and then coming through and having some success doing it. Right. I actually, I mean, you didn't you write about Zach Stacy early on that um, that's the player that you had wanted to start versus yes. Daryl Richardson. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. but. Once again, like you said, we he played, you know, behind um, – when you're playing behind Steven Jackson, he was able to come in and light up some yards. And I guess everybody was looking at that and like, well, he deserves this starting role. But, you know, it took him long enough. But I don't know what that first few weeks of the season was all about because, I, like I said, the, the whole time I even thought Stacy was one – that should have been out there um, taking snaps before Daryl Richardson. But, you know, I don't get paid the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Brown from the right, the wrong, and the random. She, she has been joining us all these past few weeks, and, and she, she's going to join us for the uh, rest of this NFL season. We are always glad to have her on. Robin, my friend, your friend, everybody's friend, Kellen Clemens, yeah. Uh, was ten was ten for twenty two uh, with my public education math. That's about forty five percent. He made the throws that he had to make. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, uh, hey, hold up, hold up, Palmer. He uh, he did like Shaq. And you know when <laughs> since I talk about, I'm gonna go to the basketball world. He's Shaq. I got to make the throw when I need to make the throw. <laughs> I don't need to, I, don't worry about my free throw percentage. <laughs> and Shaq said, when I need to make it, when I need to make the free throw, I make the free throw. <laughs> hey, you, hey, listen, I, hey, uh, Kellen, four of those ten passes went to uh, Jared Cook. Like you said, um, 
You know, he 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 must have uh, he must have touched the King James Bible or something <laughs> because uh, he was able to you know hold on to the ball. Uh, but it, it still kind of looked like Clemens was got a little excited and you know overthrowing guys and making wild and crazy throws. Sometimes it looks like when he plays. He had five five-hour energy drinks, which uh, which means that he has 25 hours worth of pent-up energy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you know, just trying to regulate that. But listen, I mean, uh, no interceptions. Uh, he was able to keep keep the keep it keep it moving down the field, and and as long as they keep winning, I guess you really don't uh, mind with his uh, poor percentages. Right, I you know what, and I really didn't mind. I mean, they got out to that big lead early on, and he was able to con hold it and contain it, and the defense did their job on their end. So, um, if he threw an errant pass without it, I mean, there was one in which um, could have went for an interception. I think that was was that Brian Quick yeah. that was able to uh, mm -hmm. bat it down so it wouldn't be intercepted. Um, and made a good play on that end. So, um, yeah, you know, when you're playing well, you start to feel it. I, I, I remember those days. You think you can do it, everything, anything. <laughs> Let me try this. <laughs> so, you know, has he even made, I, I have, hey, he made, I, as much as I get on him, he made several passes over 20 yards <laughs> yeah. downfield. So, I need to eat my crow today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's okay. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, we have to, you know, slowly uh, matriculate towards that. I mean, that's uh, – I still believe the defense is the heart and soul of the team. And, mm -hmm. and you mentioned earlier how they was putting the pressure on, on Josh McCown. And I, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the way that the Rams stood up on the goal line, the goal line, mm -hmm. the goal line stand – by Joe Lund Dunbar. I'm going to tell you something about Joe Lund Dunbar. He's tougher than a $2 steak. He does. I mean, that guy, that guy right there, uh, you know, he got, you know, he got, he got suspended. Okay. He got suspended, right? He had to, you know, yeah. the four game suspension and then for the PED, he come back. I mean, just as strong as he was uh, uh, when he left. I mean, True Bane Johnson, uh, one, of, one of your favorite players, one of, one of my favorite players, Forcing a fumble. I mean, he had he had to lead the game because of concussion. But mm -hmm. I mean, getting in there making plays. I mean, Janoris Jenkins actually had an interception uh, call back, uh, right. you know, out out leaping. Uh, you know, Alshon Jeffries. A he's a big dude. I mean, six five. Yeah. Uh, you know, long reach. So uh, for, just with the with the secondary, and we'll we'll get we'll get to to the linebackers and then. The defensive line, the Coupe de Gras, we can talk about your favorite guy last. But with mm -hmm. the cornerbacks, you know, uh, Corla Finning yeah. was out. Brandon McGee was in. Brandon McGee had a lot of penalties. But what did you think about the play of the secondary? I think they really were improved because, you know what, uh, although the Bears come in injury-riddled teams, you know, up and down the line, you still have Brandon Marshall and, and um, Alshon Jeffrey running, you know, on two opposite ends. You know, they're, they're, they're best receivers. And they were able to contain them and hold them down. Yeah, Brandon Marshall got, I think, 117 yards. But who cares in the whole deal of it all if you're not getting the touchdown out of it? You can run up and down the field all you want. But if you're not scoring a touchdown, so what? And it was able to, they were also able to um, to hold off any more, once they got, once they were able to catch the ball, they were able to tackle them and not get too many yards after the catch. So that was a big improvement on Nanny and McDonald, um, Johnson, everybody came through. McGee, huh? <laughs> 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 and you know, I got I got a text about McGee, and then you know, and, and I'm not gonna say exactly what the text said, uh, but you know, listen, McGee hasn't played much, yeah. and at one point, at one point during training camp, I mean, he was out playing Tremaine Johnson, but that didn't last long. And, and Tremaine, I, I, I'm telling you, I mean, he he is probably the most solid cornerback 
uh, the Rams have have had in a very long time. I mean that 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 young man is solid. He doesn't have great speed, but he has great instincts. He mm-hmm. tackles well. He can force a fumble. Um, you know, I, I think the Rams got something going good there. But Corlin Finnegan is out for the rest of the year. I mean, he was that veteran corner. They signed to a fifty million dollar contract. How big you think it is for him not uh, being back there the rest of the season? It opens up other players to earn their spot on the team for next year. I mean, he Cortland Finnegan was um, a sliver of the man that he was last year and prior in his prior years in uh, Tennessee. I don't know how his production went from so high to so low so quickly, um, but it it's something that, you know, you're just going to have to say, well, we'll it, I was talking about earlier, you know, they're going to have to eat that contract. You know, it didn't work out this year, um, but it will open up, you know, these young players to get time. Like you said, with McGee coming in again the ne- the following week, then he can have more games under his belt and be able to be ready for NFL West football, which is coming up next. So that's what I think. What about you? Well, I, I I I agree. I agree. I think the Rams, uh, they they that may be a direction they may be looking in uh, when the draft rolls around. Uh, but they have to be really um, uh, pleased with the play of, of McLeod, uh, you know, at the safety position, and then you know McDonald coming back. And I mean, uh, I mean, he he came back with with a vengeance. And I mean, the Rams have a very promising secondary. I think with free safety and strong safety, I think in the draft they're going to have to add. Uh, some more depth and maybe another starter at the cornerback position, but overall, I still think that they they play they play strong. Uh, moving on to the uh, linebacker core, you know, Jalen Dunbar, Ogletree, Laronitis, uh, those guys who were heavy in, in the in the run game. A big reason why the Rams were able to stand tall in in the red zone. But that defensive line, that mm-hmm. defensive line, again, you 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 mentioned earlier about. Uh, you know, about finesse and then, you know, playing, imposing your will. Talk about that front four and talk about the pressure they were putting on McCown. Now, they earned, uh, if I had some money, I know I'd be taking them to Morton's. And you talking about a instead of a $2 steak? <laughs> <laughs> I could take them, if I have money to take them to Borden's or even Deerdorf's and Hard or whatever, State House in uh, St. Louis that is uh, the night, wherever they want to go, they deserve it on with uh, this play. Again, I mean, th- they didn't get as many, um, ta- or excuse me, um, why can't I think of my word right now? They get, they oh, get my sacks. sacks. Sorry, they didn't get as many sacks this time, but there were so many hurries, so many times, you know, running McCown out of the uh, pocket and, you know, trying to make up stuff on the go. You know, you had, um, it was just too much pressure. Um, Hayes, Langford, um, our almighty Quinn, and uh, <laughs> Michael Long, Brockers, Michael Brockers, Michael Brockers we, and we can talk about that play in a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure you have something to say about that hit. So um, that they all, you know, came to form together, and you know, it, it to me, it was just all. T- you know, you can't highlight just one person who did it. This was a all effort, team effort on that front court. You know, there's not one person that I wanted like say, oh, he was the best in this game. They all put in work, and they, uh, like I said, they all deserve a uh, state, a big old nice state. You know, wherever they want to go. <laughs> Robin Browning from the right, the wrong, and the random join us tonight for the Rams roundup. I'm Palm Alexander sitting in the pilot seat tonight. Uh, Ishmael Sistrunk <laughs> is uh, on assignment, so uh, I imagine that, you know, for anybody that's, that's watching, they say, okay, the Rams round up, why is he wearing an Oakland Raiders hat? <laughs> Two reasons. One, is I'm always paying homage to NWA, one of the greatest rap crews that has ever, ever faced God's green earth, in there, and they are they have been nominated for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How about And they better get in, too. And number two, and number two, 
I've noticed every time, anytime I wore St. Louis paraphernalia <laughs> during the season, it ain't yeah. always losing. It jinx, it jinx the Cardinals. <laughs> Listen, it goes back. I jinx, I jinx the Cardinals in '85. I, I used to wear. I used to wear my red. <laughs> I, I wore my little red bat helmet, okay, in '85. <laughs> And I'm sitting in the living room when Don Dinkinger blew that call. And I remember falling on the floor. My mama like, boy, what's wrong with Jim? You know, so, <laughs> ever since then, I'm like, I can't be jinxing the home team. So I love the Rams. But, you know, homage to uh, NWA and all those great members, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, Red, RPEZ. But that's that's why I'm rocking. That's, that's why I'm rocking. So, but – Back back to back to that to that defense and that, that, that front four. The way that they play, Robin, allows the Rams not to, to bring pressure. I mean, I have to give the Bears some credit too. They did a great job of protecting McCown, but but the pocket was collapsing on him. The pocket was mm-hmm. always collapsing on him. He had to hurry the throws. And I, and one of the reasons why he had the game that he did have. He had a, he didn't have a bad game is that look, he's a veteran quarterback. He's thirty right. four years old. He's been around. So he, he knows what to do. He knows how to handle a little bit of adversity in the pocket. So but again, it just goes to show you how great the Rams front four are and it allows them to play uh, a whole lot of zone coverage because, you know, the front four is getting there. Now, speaking of the front four, we'll segue into the San Francisco 49ers game. Big game. Um, is You know, the Rams are going going up against Kaepernick. Kaepernick is, is starting to struggle a little bit. Uh, I've always thought that he's overrated. Uh, never really uh, big on Kaepernick. How do you think the Rams front four is going to handle San Francisco this Sunday? Oh, just like they did last time. You know, they, they were fine last time. It's just a matter, you know, the, the offense wasn't there for um, the Rams and their loss here in St. Louis. So I still expect them to still deliver the pressure on him. And like you said, Kaepernick, I, you know what? Not to say that he's not good. Everybody else has caught up to him and knows and has, and has got his number. Every de- every defense, especially ours, they know what he's going to do. So I see th- I see them um, being able to still apply the pressure on him. Of course, he can still run and, and make a play, but um, Quinn that time. <laughs> and so. I think the, I think that the way that the Rams play the run, and it seems like running quarterbacks really hate seeing the Rams come their way. Because mm-hmm. just like you mentioned, even in the game that they won to St. Louis, San Francisco was struggling. They were struggling to move the ball. They was frustrated. Uh, you know, it was like you say, it was the Rams offense not getting anything going because, you know, San Francisco then didn't, didn't bust out to late on into the game when, it, you know, when, mm-hmm. when the Rams just kept making mistake after mistake. But I, I honestly believe that the Rams, if for whatever reason, they, they play the NFC West tough because it's, it's some uh, being familiar, you know, with the opponents. But nevertheless, read option quarterbacks, quarterbacks that like to scramble, they do not like playing the Rams because, one, uh, the Rams play extremely physical. And then, two, they like to get up in that box. And, Robert, pay, pay close attention this, this Sunday – and uh-huh. as that safety, when that safety comes up to that edge, that line of scrimmage or close to it, and either the, the left tackle or the right tackle, that, that, that guy's coming in to pinch on that line to force that play the other way. And I think that's what you're going to see a lot with the Rams pinching in, especially on the on, on that right side. So you kind of you kind of look for certain things, uh, how to like to use different wrinkles, uh, you know, what they like to do, especially when they're playing against running quarterbacks like Kaepernick. Yeah, I will look out for that now. <laughs> Not just looking out for who looks good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that 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 has gotten that, that can get some people in trouble. That's you know. Uh, and by and by the way, Tamika Catchers look good. But uh, we went uh, Robin Browning from the right, the wrong, and the random. We were previewing the San Francisco 49ers game. Of course, I'm going to pick. Uh, the Rams to win, but uh, I, I got a few concerns. I mean, mainly the concerns on the Rams side. Will Zach Stacy be 
uh, mm -hmm. okay to play. He went out with a concussion. Same thing with uh, Tremaine Johnson. Uh, mm -hmm. Robin, how, how are you going to handicap this thing about whether or not those two guys will be able to contribute? And if they're not, do you think that might affect the Rams being able to win in San Francisco? With Zach Stacy being out, um, it does put us at a, at a slight disadvantage because you do have that two two headed game. Um, but you know what, Isaiah P. Although he did not get in a lot, but when he did get in, he was efficient. So I can see him and Cunningham taking the load and being able to um, you know get yards. What, whether it's two or 22, just continue to push the chains forward. And um, I still think that they will be able to get it now if they, now whether it's going to be burst of speed or, you know, big burst coming out of it through a hole, you know, that's a whole different story uh, with the um, 49ers defense now working its way back together again. So it, that, that, that's my only hang up. Tremaine Johnson, that, that's going to be tough, too, as well. But, you know, the Rams have found ways in order to um, be able to combat that. But once again, here we go. We have two huge, not only huge receivers, they're huge in big ways and <laughs> that you have Bolden and Davis, which are big, strong guys. And to have one man down, that's going to be tough. So I guess Jeff Fisher is going to have to do another uh, blood, a blood wider ceremony and get them hyped <laughs> up and be able to uh, whatever mojo juice he has to do, it, it, he better put it on them so they uh, feel great enough to know they can go in and confident that they can uh, come out with a victory. Well, I think it's all in the mustache. It's all <laughs> in the mustache. But, you know, back to what you mentioned about Isaiah P. And, and and I wrote a little bit about it uh, in my column. You can read that this Thursday, every Thursday mm -hmm. in the St. Louis American. Uh, what, what I mentioned was, um, okay, he caught the two-point conversion. Uh, but I think if, if Stacy can't play, you're going to – I mean, Fish has been dressing him anyway because he's been contributing on special teams, mm -hmm. on kickoff and on, on punt coverage. And, yes, he wasn't drafted to do that. And we, we know he's a little skittish when it comes around to football. But Fisher has found something for him to do for him to make contribution to this team. And I right. think that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And I think that – same thing with Stedman Bailey. I mean, Stedman Bailey had a record-setting year last year uh, uh, with all those touchdowns. And he went well mm -hmm. over – 1,300 receiving yards, but now, you know, he, he might get one catch a game, but I think Fisher does a great job of getting everybody involved and finding something that you can be able to do to help the Rams come out on top on Sunday. Right, because there's nothing worse than having a player on a team who, you know, some sourpuss person, especially when it's a, a must-win game for you, and they upset because they – I'm not getting the ball. I, uh, I've been doing all this. I'm working hard in practice, and I'm still not coming in the game. You know, that's the last thing you need, especially in this final this final push to the end of the season. And, like, there could be a potential um, playoff, you know, the P word, you know, playoff um, chances here. You know, like I, earlier with the, the North, NFC North is just wacko. The NFC East, there's not, not a word to even say about them. And <laughs> the <laughs> South is sort of, you know, so that, that, that does leave them open for a, a wild card burst, you know. So um, just, I, 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 they, they really do have something going here in which, like you said, Isaiah P was, uh, you know, considered almost a starter this season, even though he's not in that starting position anymore that there's something for him to still, you know, look forward to that he's still contributing in a special team plays. And then when he can come in on a play here and there that, you know, he's efficient. Same thing with Sam and Bailey. They listen to us Palmer. Cause we said <laughs> that they, 
you need to have Tavon and Stedman on the field at least one time together. You know, they they can read each other and help each other out, you know, with that. So, you yeah. know, you got two, two yes. quick plays out there. Come on, man. Let's and, come you know, out. and you know what, listen, how, how, how about that? And I totally agree with you. Uh, that uh, that they are listening and paying attention to what the hell we talking about because mm -hmm. listen when when you give Tavon Austin the ball something is good liable to happen you mm -hmm. have to keep giving him the ball okay the Rams didn't trade up for him not to get the ball in any way shape or form he can make something happen at any given time. So, Ishmael, I know you're going to be watching this broadcast. Okay. <laughs> Tavon Austin, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad you said whatever you need to say to get him all worked up, and he doing. I don't know what kind of <laughs> da what dance was he doing in the end zone. I'm, I, I'm like, damn, I, I, I ain't never seen that one before. But I don't know. At first, I thought he was doing that little Terrio <laughs> dance, that's a YouTube sensation, and then, but it looked like something different. So he took a his little turn on little Terrio's dance and put his own spin to it, I guess. I guess it's the Tavon dance now. <laughs> we need to make that viral. <laughs> Robin Brown and from the right, the wrong, and the random. So I guess it's safe to say, since, you know, since, you know, we kind of on the same page, yeah. uh, the Rams, the Rams going to win. What, what score are the Rams going to win by the Sunday? I think it's going to be close, 28-24. Wow. Okay. I, I think I think the Rams are going to going to continue where they've been doing. They're going to get out in front, and and they're going to they're going to hold tight. But it's never a Rams game without a few field goals from Greg Zerline. Rams win 27 to 20 mm -hmm. against the uh, San Francisco 49ers in. And uh, it's going to be a big weekend. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. As a matter of fact, it's, it's a big weekend in football uh, with Mizzou playing Texas A&M on, on Saturday night. And then you got the Rams playing uh, the following day. So it's always good mm -hmm. to have both of the uh, football teams doing extremely well uh, this time of the year. Robin, well, what do you got coming up uh, on your show this week? All right. I am talking about... You know, the right, we could be talking about some things going on in the NCAA with the wrong. I am hmm, talking about the I word injuries in the NBA. Killing. Ah, the random, you know, I think we with high school basketball is starting this week. So that's a great thing to see the young, young people, future uh basketball players, football, you know, they're actually ending this week too with the uh, football playoffs is coming to an end as well. But um, with the random, I'm going to take it back to high school and should there be a shot clock in high school? Wow. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that'll be a very interesting debate. I think that, I think that's good because it keeps teams from uh, just holding the basketball uh, I mean, not not to veer completely all the way off base, but there 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 are some teams that were notorious for just yeah. milking the clock uh, yeah. for no damn reason. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you know, at least while I was in high school and playing, um, the Catholic girls' schools were notorious for that, just doing Dean Smith four corners all ugh, all day long. Yeah, well, so. I, I played. I had to, the the august pleasure of playing against Yeshiva. Uh, the and they, they the little. They, 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 I don't want. Oh man, I almost said the little the little uh, team, but the Yeshiva Ghost Goldstein. So you know they playing with the yarmulkes on their heads, and I'm wondering, right. okay, how's this yarmulke gonna stay on their head? But they <laughs> you know, they just zipping the ball around, passing around, and then you you get frustrated. And I think uh, we ended up we ended up beating them, right? We beat right. them fifty six to thirty one. It was just mm -hmm. one of the, the most boring game uh, you could <laughs> ever possibly watch. I mean, you couldn't press them, you couldn't do nothing. They just it just it just irked me. But my coach told me don't make fun of them because you might end up working for them one day. 
people that are watching what are some what is something that you are thankful for in this this thanksgiving holiday oh good question let's see i am thankful that you know some things that don't turn out right for you and you know with this year some things just you, you didn't step in but i'm thankful that it did because now guess what i'm hosting the right the wrong and the random and i love it and I hope you all watch it. So I'm very thankful for all that <laughs> crap that happened in the past to bring me to this. And I'm doing something that I like. So that's something that I'm really thankful for. Besides the all the top three, God, family, and friends. Right. Well, that's 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 awesome. And by the way, make sure that you your your page is public so everybody can see all the great stuff. Um, check out her latest video with a good friend of mine, Vincent Crisp. He goes by The Voice. Uh, very entertaining character. Every, the, the last couple of videos he's put up, and he has been, he's went viral. He's on fire. So we're going to be doing some stuff with him uh, down the line. Robin, enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday. So glad to have you with us. Ishmael, see you next time. Thanks again for joining us for the Rams Roundup. I am Palmer Alexander signing off.